here's the little quilt all put together. All it needs is the borders, and I'll use those three colors for the border. And I started at one o'clock, and it's 519, and here it is all put together. I'm Jody Barrows with the Square and a Square Technique, and I'm going to show you real quickly how to make a lovely little quilt called Constellation that has 12 stars in it. We'll use option one of the square and a square and option three, the flying geese. So the first thing you need to do is choose three colors that you like. My green is my uh, background color. My points of my star are going to be the dark purple and the centers of my star are going to be this beautiful multi-color. So um, half a yard, half a yard, and I think a half a yard is plenty for that. We'll talk about borders, binding, and backing at a later time. Next, you're going to cut um, a couple of strips that are two inches. I think one strip, if you're doing selvage to selvage, we need uh, 16 squares that are three and three eighths. We need 12 squares that are two and a half inches, and we need six squares that are two and seven eighths. We need uh, two strips, selvage to selvage, that is one and three fourths, and we need four strips. Um, you can cut them the same one and three fourths, but if you're wanting to be skimpy on your fabric, you can cut those one and a half. But then you have to make sure you don't get these messed up. So to make it easy, cut six strips, one and three fourths. Then we're going to do the two and a half inch squares, sew them as our option ones, the square and a square, and we're going to do these six squares. Next, you're going as to our start piece. your strip in the sewing machine, and then you're going to put your squares on top. And you'll line up the edge of your square right along with the edge of your strip. These are the two and a half inch squares, and we want to put a purple strip on each side, each of the four sides of the square. And you can see how you'll just pick up your next one and put it right down on. And you want just a nice little finger space in between. And you'll do that, we call that side one, and you'll do that for all 12 of your squares. You can see here on the back, I'll move the camera around a little bit. You can see here how we already did a strip and when we got to the end we just started another one and here are some of those two and a half inch squares that we worked okay. on. Okay, when you have your two and a half inch squares, when you have side one sewn on, all of those, you can see them kind of laying there in the back. I have a, still have a little bit of fabric here and all four sides are going to be the same color. So I clipped two of them off and notice how you don't have to open this up, just leave it nice and flat laying together and just match those sides up and just sew down what we call side two. You want the um, squares and the strips to be all lined up nice and neat and I don't have any more room there for another square so I'll just sew all the way through and then I'll pick up a new strip and of course we want our right sides up and I'll start it and then notice how you can come around here to the back and this is where I had started another strip so I'm just going to trim it and then I'm going to pick him up right there and this is the one that I want to come over here and lay down on my strip So I'll scoot him up there under the, the foot. And we're going to sew down side two. Side two is the opposite side. And we're going to do this to all 12 squares. Okay, so I brought the rest of them around. You can see here how my strip is not going to be long enough to do all of them. So um, I'm just going to cut off um, two, I think, and I will just add another purple strip for them here in just a minute. So once again, you just want to line them up 
This is side two. We've already done side one. And you want that to be nice and straight. And just sew all the way in through to the end. I still have three little squares to do. So I'm just going to, if you haven't figured out yet, I'm sewing in the RV and I'm using my cell phone to video it. So I've got one hand holding the phone and the other one I'm trying to sew and I'm sewing standing up. Okay, so now we're gonna sew down side two. We have these two here. And even though I'm kind of at a awkward part of trying to sew and hold the camera, you can see how fast this is gonna go. Okay, now I have side one and two on all of these. You can see back here on all of these. So now I'm just gonna go in and separate them with my scissors and clean them up where they need to be cleaned up. Separate these and we'll trim this one off. And then okay, we'll press and be ready set to where you can see me press these really fast. So I like to just go over the top. I like to lay them down so it's easy for my hand to pick up that strip and push that iron. Now I also like to use a smaller iron, not the big irons. For one thing, they stay hot, they don't turn off. I don't have to wait for my iron to warm up, but I also think that those bigger irons are a lot to handle. It's a lot of hot space that you don't need. I use my little ones unless I'm pressing a big quilt. And you can see here how I just go right on top of it and I just keep building right on top and I'll do that for all 12. You can see how we have side one and side two on for the square and a square. And these are going to be just option ones, which are just plain square and squares, and they're going to be perfect when we get them sewn and when we get them cut. So my next step will be cutting, um, we'll be sewing side three and four on, and we don't use a long strip when we sew side three and four like we did on side one and two. We're going to do a shorter strip. So I'm just going to take my fabric and I'm going to lay it across my square and get an estimated amount of strip. And then I'm just going to fold it just like this. And I will clip the folds at the top and at the bottom. And then I will have a short strip which will sew right along the side on each side. And we'll do that for side three so and side four. So you can four. see how I've got these folded. And these are the short strips. And I'm just going to clip those folds. And it'll give me these short pieces that I need to go on side three and four of my All right, here you can uh, see the square. square that I've got going in the machine. You can see the short strip that is along that green side and how I've already started sewing. We'll come around here to the back and you can see some that I've already done. So see how you just sew all the way through to the end and then just start the next one and keep going. So here is my next one here, ready to roll. So, we'll just finish that one up, start this one. Now that strip needs to be right along the edge of that square, just as nice and neat as you can. And make your seam allowance go right along that edge nice. So here's my next one. So just sew all the way through, start the next one. And you'll do this for all 12 of these that are the two and a half inch. There's my little stack of strips.
Okay, I like to start my square a little bit uh, so that the machine will kind of help hang on to it. And then I'm ready to sew. It'd be fun to sew in the RV today and just make this quick little video to show you guys how easy and fast these can all be. So when you finish side three, then you'll just turn them around and put a strip on side four. We'll come back and finish that up here and in just a minute. while you're sewing your uh, squares and strips together, go ahead and jump over and grab the two and seven eighths inch squares. You should have six of those, and we're gonna sew those the same way. See, we already went down side one, now we've turned them around and we're sewing down side two. And that kind of gets them all going at the same time here. And just kind of assembly line. So that's the six for the flying geese of the two and seven eighths. We have side one and two on. We'll cut those apart and press. And do side Let's three. Let's see and if four. we can get these pressed a little bit here where you can see. And these are the bigger two and seven eighths. You can see how the process of the sewing is the same. Our colors are staying the same. Our size changes a little bit. And there's side one and two, all pressed and ready for the next one. Okay, so I want you to see how we measure the strip that's gonna go here. We don't wanna make them too long. They don't have to go all the way. They just need to cover that center square. So, I'm just going to lay it across the raw edge to the raw edge. I want just a little bit hanging off. Of course, that selvage, we don't, we're not going to make them all that long. Really just look from there to there, just that little bit. And then we're going to fold them. Now, the next ones don't have to be folded as long because uh, that first one has that selvage on it. So, see, here you go. Now, we're going to cut... those folds and you can see here how we have a strip that's long enough to go down the side. Now see we have plenty of fabric there. I could have actually made those just a little bit shorter but it worked out worked out perfect. Now we're just going to sew them right along here. So you can see how the square and the strip are lining up and we're sewing right along the edge. Do that for all six um, 
of your two and seven eighths inch. Okay, so now we're ready to open. trim our two different sizes of squares. We have our small two and a half inch ones here that will be our option ones. Square into squares, meaning that we leave the fourth of an inch on all four sides. And then we have the six here that are the two and seven eighths, and they will be our flying geese. So here we want to trim, leaving a fourth of an inch on all four sides. So here's our little square right here. We're gonna take the square and square ruler. We're going to put the nine right in the tip or the corner the black lines will go right over the seam your grid line should go right through that point and we're going to trim it up and we're going to turn it and we're going to do that for all four sides now as you trim and go around you want to look at the outside edges where you've already trimmed so since this will be my third trim I am looking here and here. And not that the lines will line up perfectly with the fabric underneath, but I'm looking at the line and the edge of the fabric to see if they look even, neat, or parallel. Because it's important for the outside to stay square and for your seam allowances to stay correct, even if your inside lines don't line up perfectly. And that's part of the magic of the square and a square system, is that even if you're cutting, sewing, and pressing on getting your fabric uh, squares, were not perfect or great or wonderful, or maybe you were using one hand and um, filming, you're still going to get a nice um, unit for your block. You'll have slightly blunted corners and that's okay. And your block should be square and you should have that nice fourth of an inch on there. So we have 12 of these that we're going to do for our um, star quilt called Constellation. And um, if you're new to the system, when you purchase a ruler, you get a beginner book uh, with that ruler. It's called the Quick and Easy Book. And this is one of the patterns that's in there called Constellation. And I have made this many times and, of course, taught it um, over the almost 30 years now. And it is a great little quilt to make, and it's a great one to learn on. So we're just going to keep repeating uh, on these 12 squares that are two and a half inches. The 90 goes right in the tip and that black line goes right over this, um, it goes right in the tip. The black lines go right over the seam. You can see that nice fourth of an inch seam allowance. And as you cut, make sure those outsides are staying nice and square. Okay, so you would do that for all 12 of them and set them aside. I'll finish mine up here in just a minute. Now for these larger ones that were two and seven eighths, we're going to turn those into flying geese. So we want to do two sides leaving the fourth of an inch. So we're gonna do two sides, two opposite sides, just like I did before. The 90 goes right in the point, black lines over the seam, and keep it square, okay. Then I want you to take it and set it aside, and I want you to repeat this for all six of your squares, because the other two sides we're going to trim different, because these are going to turn into our flying geese, and so we have to uh, create some points and move some seam allowances. So see how I want you to leave that fourth of an inch on two opposite sides, and I want you to do that to all six of these that are your two and seven eighths of an inch. So just for ease of making this speedy for you, we're gonna play like that these are done and I'm ready to go back and trim the other two sides. So you're gonna put the 90 in there just like you did before. We call it the Texas two-step because now you're going to go to the right side of that 90 and you're gonna move over two lines, one, two. So there's one and there's two. And I want the tip of that line to be nice and sharp right in the tip of that square. The black lines will line up right over the seam. You have a new grid line right here that goes through the point. Of course, look where you've already cut and see if your block is staying nice and square. Now, when you trim it up, it will not leave that fourth of an inch like when we trim with the 90 right in there. See how that's a nice sharp trim? And that is what we want. Stick with me for those of you that are new and you'll see what we're doing and why we're doing it. Okay, so we left the fourth of an inch on two sides. We trimmed right up to the tip on the other two. Now we're going to just take the ruler and put the edges of the ruler 
right through those sharp Texas two-step trim. Go right through those centers and cut it in half. And look, you have two perfect flying geese. No dog ears to trim. Everything is smooth and flat and neat. And when I come back and sew a fourth of an inch here and a fourth of an inch here, my point will be right there exactly where it needs to be. Now with that green mat, it might be a little bit hard to see, but a fourth of an inch and a fourth of an inch, and my point will be right there exactly where I need it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a couple of other ones so that you can see. And these will be the Texas two-step trim where I'm stepping over two lines. Check to make sure it's staying square on the outside edges where you've already trimmed. So there's my 90 and I step one, two. We call it the Texas two step because you're going to one side of the 90, not both sides, and you're stepping over two lines. And then when you do that to both of them, you may cut them in half. Now when you get ready to cut them in half, Make sure you're going through the Texas two-step, not through the fourth of an inch. So there's your two perfect flying geese. So when we get ready to start putting our star together, it's, it's going to be a little bit different than this. But here you can see how you could make an Ohio star with your option one square and a square in the middle and your flying geese here on the outside edges. And because your work is so nice and neat and even, and you've helped remove the human element um, out of your work, you're going to get smooth, flat work and nice, sharp points with less skill and uh, less ability and with more speed. So speed and accuracy is what you gain when you learn the square in a square system. It's really important to keep your block square as you go around. So make sure you always look at the outside edges where you've already cut so that your block will stay nice and square. Even if these lines in here are not as perfect as you would like, keep that outside. Okay, so these are more flying geese. Two sides, we're going to start at the beginning again. Two sides, leave the fourth. And uh, we just have six that we're doing for this little quilt. But even if you had 200 in a stack, it's worth it to trim two, set it aside. Trim two, set it aside. Then go back. So we're going to trim the two with the 90, leaving the fourth of an inch. Set it aside. Trim two opposite, set it aside. Because it will just, if you try to go all the way around your block trimming each one with your flying geese, you're going to forget and mess up on which corner is what, and you could ruin your work. So do two, set it aside when you have your whole stack done, then come back and do the other two. So there's my 90. We're going to step two, doing the Texas two step. Do it on the opposite side. Step over two. Then you can come in here and cut it right through the middle. All right, I'm going to finish up my other um, two flying geese, and I'm going to finish up my other ten square and a squares. These are option one square and a square. These are option three flying geese. There are 39 options of the square and a square system, all that you can do with this one tool. And you can do them any size that you want from little to big. So there's no limitation to how small or how big any of your quilts or any of your units can be. That's one of the, the beauty of the system is that you have one uh, ruler that makes every triangle unit and it makes them any size that you want. Be sure and check out our other YouTube um, videos and also my website to learn more and to see more. Lots and lots of videos uh, on there for you to learn how to use your ruler and get the most out of it. So that's all of my flying geese. I'm gonna go ahead and trim up my um, option ones and come back okay. and we'll start putting so, the together. Once you have your option one square and squares trimmed up and your flying geese, you're ready to start laying your quilt out and putting it together. I just wanted to trim the last 
option one square and a square again for you so that you can see that fourth of an inch. Now these are the smaller two and a half inch ones. I had one left um, so that I saved it so that I could trim for you again. And I want you to see how, see how that fabric just needs to cover that square when you're sewing those. And those are what we call the basic square. Okay, so that's my last one. Now, there was one other piece that we needed to cut. Uh, we needed to cut um, these uh, from the other fabric, and these are going to be the centers of your star, the centers of your star. So when you get ready to start laying your quilt out, I want you to put three option ones out. Let's bring them down a little bit so you can see better. We can go way over here. Okay, so lay your option ones down and put these in between them because these points, I don't know if you can see, but see how you're starting to get a star. So you're going to put three of these down with the center of your star. And then you're going to come down here and your... your backgrounds. This is our outside row, so that's our flying geese. So you can see how there, now you can see that star starting to come around. Now this would normally be a rectangle that we would cut and it would go on the outside here, but this is kind of a funny size. It would be like a three and three eighths by a one and seven eighths, and that's not fun to cut. So see these rectangles that are gonna get sewn here like this, this would be a one and seven eighths by a three and three eighths, and that's not fun to cut. So I told you to cut these strips too, because we can trim off what we don't need, and we're going to leave them in a long strip instead of cutting them into the little short uh, rectangles. So let's come over here and see how I did the sewing on that. Sorry, let me get the camera out. Okay, so this is what we want. We want this as a rectangle to go here on this open edge or what we call the body of the goose. So let's come on over here where we're doing some sewing. So here you can see what I've already got done. You can see how we put the strip in the sewing machine and started sewing the flying geese on it. And we were sewing the body of the flying goose on the green strip. And see, there's that little eighth of an inch there because we cut these two. And then we'll just come in here and trim these up perfect here. So when you come around and you'll do this, since we had uh, six flying geese, when you cut them in half, then you're going to have 12. So you'll be doing this to all 12 of them, putting your strip in the machine, and sewing the open end of the flying goose or the body, that solid green, right across to the end. And then, once again, I'm holding the camera in one hand and sewing with the other, so sorry. So there we are sewing, and now of course right sides together, and you'll just lay the body of the goose right on the edge of the strip and sew. And repeat that for all of these, for all 12 of your flying geese. Then we'll cut them apart. So let's just come on over here and cut them apart. And we'll press them. And then we'll trim them so that they'll be the right shape. There you go. 
and I'll finish getting our star laid okay, out here. so I have all six of my fine geese sewn and cut apart. So now I do want to come in here and clean up the short side of the uh, flying goose. So I'm just using the edge of my ruler and putting it right along the edge of my flying geese because they were nice and perfect. And I'm just trimming off that extra where they were sewn together. And I will do that for all 12 of mine. That side looks good already. And then I'll come over here. And I do like to use the grid lines on my ruler to make sure that I'm staying square anytime I cut or do any trimming. Now, when I have that done to all 12, you can lay them down so that the strip is on top. And then I'm just going to gently put the iron on that flying goose. So see, I put it on the flying goose and I smoothed the strip away, pushed it out or away, and it looks like that. So here you can see the strip on the top. I'm just picking the strip up after I do a setting press. So a setting press, for those of you that are new, are when you go across your piece before you um, open, a, open it up to press, no matter what it is. And that's just called setting because you're setting the seam, getting everything all nice and smooth. Then I'll just turn it over and gently press open. I've seen more work destroyed at the iron than I have anywhere else. So be nice and gentle when you press. Um, and also make sure you always work with a good quality of fabric. You'll just get better results uh, and um, not have to deal with a lot of headache that sometimes a lesser grade of fabric has to offer. To me, it's well, well worth it. Okay, so now I have these all sewn and trimmed and pressed. So my flying geese look like this. Uh, and so I've sewn one seam and when I come back and sew the other side, you can see how my points will be nice and perfect and sharp right there where they're supposed to be. So now I'm going to lay it out on here and uh, then we'll uh, start sewing. I did want to show you one more thing. Usually I like to kind of assembly line everything that I do. So I have three of these little geese left to trim up. So I laid them down. I trimmed one side. I turned all three of them and now I'm just going to go back and trim all three of the other side. Instead of just doing one you know then I'll just keep going and doing um, all of them and I usually have pieces lined out across my cutting board when I'm at home working in my bigger studio instead of the RV and I'll just line them all out trim one side then turn them all around and trim the other I think it does go faster I think it helps keep your train of thought uh, in the same direction and I do think it gives you speed so here are the last three little flying geese with their little rectangle okay, so piece. So now I have the quilt laid out. All the way around the outside edges, you're going to have your background color and your flying goose uh, set. And those were alternate all the way around uh, the quilt on the outside edge. Then on the uh, next row, you can see how you have the star center and your option one square and a square. Star center, option one square and a square, star center, um, and then of course you'll have your flying geese set. Then you'll have your option one and the background. Option one, background, option one, background. And then the rows repeat. So let me see if I can get this up high enough that you can see. There we go. So those are the first three rows. And then those top two rows you will repeat down here at the bottom, but I don't have enough room on my tiny little cabinet in the RV. So I'm going to start sewing this together, and I'm just going to sew it together in rows. So I'm going to put um, this one over this, and I'm going to sew down the side. And then this one will go over here like this, and I'm going to sew down, and I'm going to feed it in the machine just like this. And I'll keep that little thread connecting them as they go through the machine. And then they won't turn on you. And then, of course, this one will go here. And I will sew. So I'll get started on that, and okay, then I'll come and back and show them you. Up, and I and sewed them together. And I could not flip them, even if that point was here on the other side, 
because you've got to keep them in place exactly as they are in the pattern. Now because you've used your square and square ruler to trim everything up, you've got really nice seam allowances, so I don't even have to pin anything as I'm sewing it through my machine. Now also remember that um, this section here, these flying geese can be a little bit uh, shorter, but that's okay. See how they're all working out perfect? And even though I've been sewing this standing up in the RV and using one hand to sew with and the other hand to hold the camera, I want you to look at how nice and neat and even all of these seams are turning out to be. So when you are using two hands and seated in the comfort of your sewing room, you can see how much you can improve your perfection okay. uh, using it's the four o'clock. I started cutting my pieces out at one o'clock. I even stopped and had lunch. So in three hours, I've gotten all of this cut and all of these sewn, and I'm ready to start putting my quilt together. So you can see now what I was talking about, about when you sew it through, you leave it, you just keep chain piecing it. Don't trim those apart. Keep those on there. Now, when we open these up, if I can do this one-handed. So see, everything is exactly where it needs to be, and it won't turn or twist on you. So many times we get the, the pieces put in the right spot, and then they get turned going through the sewing machine. So you can see how that star is starting to pop out on your piece. And of course, my little table isn't allowing me to put the other two rows on, but I would have continued with the other two rows down here um, going. So now I'm going to put them over. So see, these are the, now I want this one to go here, this one to go here, this one to go here, and so on. So you can see how I'm going to pick them up and put them over on the next. And I will sew down like this once again. And notice how we haven't even used any pins. Look at my sewing. There are no pins anywhere. And this is my sink. This is my board that goes over my sink and it gives me a bigger work area. Here's my little machine I've been working on. And the only pin that is in reach distance is this one right here on my refrigerator. Oh, and by the way, that is the cover for the new book, Threads of Courage. It's the third one, and it will be out uh, around the end of June, sometime this summer. We're already taking orders on it. We've uh, been showing it on this tour uh, this week as we've gone to Paducah and different quilt guilds. So I'm gonna go back and sew that other row together, and, and probably a few more, okay, and then so I'll show you what it's four rows on. put together. One, two, three, four. Notice how we have that little stitch um, everywhere holding the pieces together. So see how they all stay together. They all have that little thread. So they're not going to get turned once we get them in the block correctly. And I want to come in here close. I want you to see how we're going to have nice, we already have nice, sharp Where's my, there we are, nice sharp points everywhere. Look up here at this one. Look at that nice perfect point over here. We've got our fourth of an inch ready to go. Look, wow, look at these nice corners everywhere. And no pins were used. And our blocks are fitting together really nice. Look at these nice points. Look at these. Very good. Okay, I'm going to keep sewing the blocks, the other um, pieces together in the rows. We'll be right back. So here I've just sewn this section uh, on the sewing machine. You can see how this one was the one that was on the bottom. And I just sew it on top and then just sew a little bit, feed the next one in and so on. So you can see how they open up. So nice. Okay, here you can see the little quilt coming together. I have the bottom three rows completely sewn together. And then um, the top four are almost completed. Let's come in and look at, so see how you can see how these are all strung together the way that I 
put them through the machine so that they won't turn and get uh, misplaced. So you can see there's those little threads where I just chained fed it through the machine. Now I'll come in and I'll sew um, this row together like this and then the next row and then the next row and then also this one together and you can see these here I already have them all put together you can see how the stars are starting to pop out okay I'm sewing the last two pieces together and I'm not using any pins and um, all I do is I go from one intersection to the next so see I've got that intersection caught now I'm matching up this next one nestling those together and there is a, a point right down there and because the square and a square system gives you such great seam allowances and points you don't have to worry about where that point is you know that it's exactly a fourth of an inch so if you're sewing um, with a fourth of an inch seam you know when you go through there that they're just going to go through perfectly so I've caught that seam, so I just come in here and check the next. And of course, one seam goes that way, the bottom one goes the other, they nestle together. There is a point right in there. So I'm holding those, and I don't have to pin, I don't have to take the time to take the pins out or put them in, and I just go from section to section, and with the square and a square system, trimming everything up nice and square and always having your points where you need them to be then everything is the right size and it just feeds through your machine perfectly and all of your work will be nice and smooth and neat and we'll have the quilt so put here's together. here's a little quilt all put together. All it needs is the borders and I'll use those three colors for the border and I started at 1 o'clock and it's 519 and here it is all put together.